Hello everyone. Uh, we are back today with another video on um, writing a preliminary essay. Now, in previous videos, we have looked at um, writing an outline, brainstorming. We've looked at how to write the introduction, the body paragraphs, and the conclusion all separately. Now, in this video, what we're trying to do is put all of that information together and see how we can uh, write an entire essay that is coherent and logically connected. Specifically, I'm going to be focusing on uh, the way you can use the information that you prepared through the outline and uh, write a uh, an essay that is faithful to that information. So let's begin. Now, if you remember in a previous video where I was telling you about the outline, we looked at this topic. Uh, which do you prefer, online courses or traditional face-to-face -face courses? What is your preference? Now, in response to this question, we uh, drew an outline, an outline which consisted of a thesis statement. The thesis statement was something like this. Online classes are at times superior to traditional classes due to being cheaper, more convenient, and more effective. And then we had three main ideas. The first main idea was that online classes are cheaper. The second main idea uh, referred to their convenience. And the third main idea was that they can be uh, more effective at times. And for each of these main ideas, we had three uh, supporting details. Um, I'm not going to go through the supporting details here because we've already covered it in a previous video. Um, okay, so I want to take this outline and uh, turn it into an essay. What's the first thing I do? Well, I'm going to write the introduction. Now again, we had a previous video on how to write an introduction. Uh, so if you've watched that video, you know what an introduction should be like, ideally. But um, I'm going to review that by writing an introduction for you based on this outline here. So let's go take a look at our introduction. The introduction looks something like this. Let's read it together. Technology and the internet continue to revolutionize the way we live our lives. From dating to finance, and banking, internet technology has totally redefined the game. Education is one of the areas that has lent itself particularly well to this new paradigm, with online programs and courses now offered at, what, at many well-known universities and institutions around the world. These online classes are sometimes even more beneficial than traditional classes due to being cheaper, more convenient, and more effective. Okay, so if you take a closer look at this introduction, you will see that um, the thesis comes at the very end. Now, what is it that we have at the beginning? Well, at the very beginning, we start by introducing the topic. We give our reader some background information. So, we start by saying something very general, often a fact, about technology. In this case, we have technology is really changing the way we, uh, we live our lives. And then gradually, you narrow it down. So we're not just talking about any technology. We're talking about online classes. So you got to narrow it down. So in the second sentence, we have, Okay, so technology is changing our lives, and in what areas? Well, we mentioned a few examples, dating, finance, banking. Then, at the next step, we further narrow down the topic to the field of education, which is the primary focus of our essay. So we have education as one of the areas that has lent itself particularly well. All right, and then after that, you finish up the introduction by 
presenting the thesis. These online classes are sometimes even more beneficial. So here's my stance. I think that online classes are more beneficial than traditional classes. And what are my three reasons? I use the three pronged parallel structure to introduce them being cheaper, more convenient, and more effective. Okay, now that we've seen the introduction, we're going to move on to writing the first body paragraph. And the first body paragraph is based on uh, the first main idea. And the first main idea was that these classes are cheaper. Now, let's see how this can uh, be turned into my first body paragraph. Well, my first body paragraph will start with, you guessed it, the topic sentence. So the topic sentence, if you remember from a previous video that we had on body paragraphs, is the sentence that starts the paragraph and introduces the main idea. In this case, we have one of the greatest advantages that online courses have over traditional ones is that they are usually cheaper. After introducing uh, the main idea, you then move on to talking about the three supporting details. So we have students who choose to attend these courses are not required to commute, which can save them a lot of uh, a lot on bus fares and subway passes and are likely to spend their money on and are less likely to spend their money on daily purchases such as lunch or snacks. So the first two main ideas that you have to spend money on commuting and also on lunch and snacks and whatnot. Well, these are put together in one sentence. And then I have, in addition to this, hundreds, if not thousands of courses are currently being delivered online, either at a relatively cheaper price or totally free of charge. Now, having covered the three points, I, I can wrap up the paragraph by saying something like, this is why when provided the option, more and more people are opting to save money and take online courses instead. There. So you have um, the first body paragraph. Now, um, if you notice, uh, if you look carefully, you'll notice that I have used linkers to connect uh, my supporting details together. So I have in addition to this or this is why. I recommend that you uh, you use the right linkers also when you're connecting uh, your sentences together within the body paragraphs. Okay, so so far we've covered the introduction and the first body paragraph. Let's move on to the second body paragraph. Again, back to our outline. The second body paragraph uh, should contain this main idea that online classes are more convenient. Now, what do we mean by convenient? Well, you look at the supporting details. Students can study from home. They can save a lot of time by not commuting to class every day, and they can manage to schedule their schedule in a better uh, way. All right, again, same concept. Start with a topic sentence where you introduce the main idea, and then uh, move on to uh, introducing the supporting details. Let's take a look. So in this case, my topic sentence is, convenience is another reason why many people are turning to online courses. That's the topic sentence. I'm introducing convenience as the second uh, uh, factor here. And then I have uh, the supporting details. Studying from the comfort of your own study or living room can be a huge advantage. No longer do students have to waste hours commuting to school or university. This is time that could well be spent reviewing content from a previous lecture or preparing for upcoming lessons. The online delivery of content also allows students to study at their own pace without having to worry about scheduling conflicts, or unplanned changes. So as you can see, I'm introducing the supporting details one by one, 
uh, in the rest of my uh, body paragraph. Now, I'm using a slightly different strategy here to, to connect my sentences together. Whereas in the previous paragraph, I was using explicit linkers uh, and connectors. Here, I'm using a different strategy, which is the use of pronouns and also repetition of ideas. So uh, here I have two sentences connected together without a linker. No longer do students have to waste hours commuting to school or university. This is time that could well be spent. So what is this? Well, uh, the reader can easily see that this refers to the time that is saved by not having to uh, commute to work or university. Or uh, another sentence begins with, the online delivery of content also allows students to. So I'm, I'm sort of like repeating the idea of, of online, of, of material being delivered in an online uh, format. Now this can be a little bit more tricky for many of you. So if you're not really sure how to use um, uh, repetition of ideas or uh, pronouns correctly, uh, go ahead and just use linkers. I mean, that's a safer way. And um, for many, it's an easier way too. Okay, so body paragraph two, check. Moving on to body paragraph three. So here we have the main idea as online classes are more effective. Again, what do you mean? Let's take a look at the supporting details. Students can study whenever they are ready, you know, time of day. They can rewatch the lectures as many times as necessary. And three, the course is always available for future reference. Okay, let's take a look at body paragraph three and how it's written. Again, same idea. Start with the topic sentence, summarize your main idea. In this case, the topic sentence is, in addition to the two benefits described so far, online courses have, in many cases, been shown to be more educationally effective. There you go, that's the main idea. How about the supporting details? Well, people learn best at different times of the day. Some individuals are morning learners, while others learn best in the afternoon or evening. With online classes, you can adjust your studying to the time of the day uh, that works best for you. Moreover, since content is provided asynchronously through videos, uh, lectures, and select readings, students can always go back and review the content for as many times as necessary. Furthermore, course content is sometimes made available for months, if not years, after the completion date. So here's the supporting details in the same order as in the outline. And notice that I've um, added a reference here. So we have a reference as well, a reference to an, an external uh, um, source. And uh, in your test, you might be asked to include one or two references, either to a passage or to an external um, uh, source. Uh, there's another video on the APA that you could watch for learning how to give citations correctly. Finally, the conclusion. The conclusion reads, in conclusion, thanks to being cheaper, more convenient, and even at times more effective, online classes are preferred by many learners over traditional face-to-face -face classes. It may not be too far-fetched to envision a day in the not-so-distant future where virtual classrooms outnumber brick-and-mortar ones. Okay, so what do we have here? We start with a trigger in conclusion, and then we review the ideas thanks to being cheaper, more convenient, right, and more effective. And then I restate my thesis. Online classes are preferred by many learners over traditional face-to-face -face ones. And then I, I discuss the implications. The implication here is that, you know, because they're so great, maybe in the future we'll have more online classes than we do uh, brick and mortar face-to-face -face ones. All right, guys. So we covered 
uh, a sample essay together. I hope you find this useful. Uh, thanks for watching.